In this tutorial, Photoshop CS6, we're going to create energy spheres. You can, you can Google this title, Creating Energy Spheres in Photoshop, and you should find a tutorial that gives you some links to this uh, Asian boy. So when we click on this link here, it's going to take us to this website called Stock Exchange. Uh, you can just Google Stock Exchange and it should take you to this. This is a popular stock photography website. You can find some free pictures as well. Unfortunately, you have to sign up. So assuming that you sign up, you log in, you click on the, the picture here, and you should get this large image. You can right-click copy this, and then go to Photoshop, go File New, and then you paste it over here. Now following this tutorial, they're going to take you to this place where you can download some brush sets. So when I click on the link, it's going to take you to some website called roman.de. And we'll just download some brush set here. So if you scroll around, we'll just download this one here, set number 11. And you'll have to extract it and get the ABR files, which are brush files. So we go back to Photoshop and you can either double click on the ABR files or you can even click on the brush here where's the brush? right here the brush tool and then hit the drop down box here and you can even click on the little uh, settings here uh, the button and look for load brushes so load those ABR kind of fancy brushes and you should be able to find them eventually uh, loaded up at the bottom here if you look hard enough you can find something that looks like energy or energy uh, balls. So if I double click it, and you can actually draw something that looks like an energy ball. If I change the color to blue, and you can even get some kind of like blue color. And of course, if you put it on a different layer, you can change its opacity. Let me press Control Alt Z. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click, duplicate this layer and it's, it's generally a good idea to uh, have the original layer so that you don't uh, mess up your image. You can always fall back to the original. So I'm going to call this original by double clicking here and we're going to be working with this layer here. I'm going to move my mouse down to the bottom of where I see the layers and the third button over one, two, three. This one here is add layer mask. It looks like a rectangle. I'm going to click on it, and I added a, a layer mask here. Okay, I probably should have done this first, but this is still okay. As long as you click on the picture itself, not on the layer mask, but the actual picture, uh, you just go to Filter, Render, Lens Flare. We could have done this before we added the, uh, the mask, but however, I'm going to choose 105 millimeters and then I'm not going to click on the boy's head, um, instead I'm going to click on the boy's hand here. So click on OK. And it looks like there's some energy ball, a lens flare coming out of his hand. Now if I, hi if I press Control Z or Control Z, you can see before and after. Talk, press Control Z repeatedly to toggle between the last action. You can see that the lens flare is kind of going a bit too uh, all over the place so this is where we use some masking techniques so we now click on the actual mask here and uh, now we're gonna use a gradient tool I'm gonna set my default uh, gradient uh, colors which is white to black white or actually uh, black to white going to use the gradient tool which is uh, located where the paint bucket tool is. You might have to right click and choose gradient tool. Hit the drop down box, choose the first option which is foreground to background color, black to white. Double click it. And if you if you hide the original layer and then use the gradient starting from the center of the energy ball, drag out a little bit, you see how we're uh, cutting away the energy orb, I want to do the opposite, Control alt Z, 
So I'm going to reverse the gradient here. So I'm going to click from the center of the energy ball out, and you can see that we got everything uh, but uh, the hand. And I'm going to press Control Alt Z. I'm going to try making it a bit bigger, and you can see that I'm getting some of the boy as well now. Okay, so this is working nicely, and let me press Control Alt Z. So based on our foreground color being black, we have to choose the reverse option to get this working. So here, if I uh, drag it out, you can see that the change between uh, the mask white to black is qu quite gradual. Uh, hence, I get a very feathered look here. I'm going to press Control alt z One thing we can try is click on the actual gradient itself in the middle. And you can even click on the bottom color here and slide this little location uh, setting. Oops, let me drag it off again. So click down here, make sure that we're right on the diamond, and I'm going to just make some uh, more white. So the percentage of white is greater. So now when we actually uh, drag out the mask, you can see the transition is a bit faster because uh, there's more white. This, the white is more solid for a longer period of time. Okay, so now we uh, this layer it looks pretty good. I'm not going to show the original layer underneath it. So now when we're looking through the whole picture, you see that uh, uh, this uh, glowing hand part uh, looks pretty reasonable relative to the overall picture. If we want to change the color of this energy ball, what we can do one way, and there's many different techniques, but one easy way is to go to Image, Adjust, Hue Saturation, Control U, and just uh, change the hue here. So I'll make the ball kind of glow a little bit uh, purplish. Um, you can even click on Colorize and force it to become a color in a harder way. So we just kind of colorize this blue here. Click on OK. And if you want to uh, do the same with uh, the another ball. You could just duplicate this layer and repeat the steps what you have here. Something else you might want to experiment with is adding a new layer and playing around with the actual custom brush. So, so with the custom brush we downloaded from the website, it's going to choose a reasonable size. I'll just choose 800 px and then you can actually draw on top of this energy orb and you can see it's kind of hard blue you can play with opacity settings or you can even hit the little drop down box and add some kind of effect such as uh, multiply which combines the layers and pulls out a dark, some kind of darkening effect or even screen which generates some kind of lightning effect so messing around with these settings could make the the energy orb look a bit more interesting Okay, something else to play with here is we choose the shape tool, the ellipse tool, and uh, uh, what we do is we make sure the settings are not on shape but on path. And before we actually use it, we check out our brush settings. If you go to the brush tool, just choose a regular soft brush, double click it, and press those uh, square brackets until it looks reasonably uh, small and then go back to the uh, ellipse tool. I'm going to drag out some kind of shape that connects the hands. Uh, you may want to press Control T which transforms the ellipse. You can kind of fix it up a little bit. You can even rotate it in an interesting way. You can even uh, click on the edge here and, and move it into place. So I'm just going to fix it up a little bit here. Press Enter when you're done transforming. And as long as one of these kind of shapes or a pen tool type tools are selected, you just right click on the edge and go to stroke path. So when we go to stroke path, what we have is the setting on brush. So we want to create a stroke using the brush. And the brush we had was blue and it was fairly thick and fairly soft. And what's going to happen is if you simulate pressure, instead of being perfectly even all the way across the circle, it's going to actually be thin on one, on one side and thick on the other. That, that's what simulate pressure is. So click on OK. And you see that we have a nice 
simulated pressure stroke path flying through here. You can play with the opacity setting. You can even make it see-through if I chose 75%. And you can press Control X. Control X actually deletes that path line. So this is kind of interesting. Finally, something else to consider is if you want to add some kind of ripple to this kind of uh, circular arc, uh, we should have actually created this arc on a new layer. Because if we go to Filter, Liquify, Filter, Liquify, and we choose the uh, forward, forward Warp tool, you realize that this other energy uh, sphere kind of brush painting is mixed in with this layer, which is a problem. But just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to kind of go around this a little bit. You can see I'm just distorting this, and then click on OK. And you see that uh, we have uh, warped this energy effect, and this is probably overkill. But this just gives you some ideas of some of the various techniques used in creating some nice uh, energy, um, energy ball, energy effects. So hopefully you enjoy this tutorial and learn something new.